this episode, Rhaenyra throws off all dissenting opinions around her and then takes her court of commoners all out onto the platform. Who among you would be first? I always talked about that coastline scene as a Western showdown, a scene out of Sergio Leone, Once Upon a Time in the West, with the dragon being the cult on their hip and the way they carefully approach each other and size each other up. What do you want? Until this point, she's thinking about people that are after their own rise and personal gain, and I think she wants to get a sense of whether she has to kill this man or kill his dragon. To serve my queen! To meet somebody that actually does this miraculous thing and then immediately bends the knee to her in a way that is a bit of a shock. Do you think you can get him to Dragonstone? The moment Adam claims sea smoke, suddenly Rhaenyra understands that she was right, that people with some Targaryen blood somewhere in their lineage can claim dragons. These people are courageous. Mongrels. Yeah, it's a big, big moment. You know, obviously last time that Jace probably would have said anything was in season one when little Jace said, am I a bastard? House Targaryen is the blood of the dragon. If any may lay claim to it, what are we then? Jace very simply looks at it as like, you're gonna just take any gutter rat from King's Landing and try to put them on dragons it makes me a common aristocrat with black hair and a checkered past. My lord. My lord. How you have come up in the world? Being initially shocked, Corlys is then very proud. It's because that's my son. Off his own back, he's made something of himself. And I think that's very important for Corlys because that's how he sees himself. Well done. Yes, two words, but they mean just more than well done. They're, they mean, I see you. Damon goes out into the godswood expecting a certain outcome, and then the fun of that scene is seeing all the cards as they're turned over. Why should we now follow a boy when you will align with one who will desecrate the innocent to reach his aims? Not only are you going to have to show your belly to them in order to get your way. I may have been a touch enthusiastic in pursuing my aims. Seize him. Your grace, command them. I've only served you. But now if you're going to go one step further and actually take the head of this guy that pledged his life and service to you. No, no, no. Damon isn't the most honorable guy in the world, but I think he does have that kind of mafia honor to him. He's made this sort of life and death pact with Willem Blackwood and said, you do my way and I'll see that the sky's the limit for you. He's so used to being in control and it all just slips through his fingers. And you see how he just comes apart at the end of it. I had a long conversation with Patty, and he said, I'll play the part, but I want to play the final scene when he offers the crown up. I want to do it in the decrepit makeup. It was Patty's idea, which is just a clever idea. And then he turns around, and Damon, for the first time, sees the full kind of degradation of his face. And he presents him the crown. He's like, God, is that what I wanted? Do I need it? There's a lot going on in that scene. Do you want it still? One of the things I love about House of the Dragon is that it's a generational narrative. We have a lot of young characters that are all coming of age, one of whom is Reyna. Lady Jane's been promised a dragon. She receives two, but it's like Asterix, they're babies, they, they can't protect her. So when she embarks on her journey, she's desperate to find like more than just a dragon, it's purpose. She doesn't stop and she's not going to stop. In episode seven, Alison has lost any power, any legitimacy that she held. She does notice a cut similar in placement to Rhaenyra's, and I think it sort of brings into focus the absurdity of it all. I wish to go out, Sir Ricard. Her need to escape King's Landing is to sort of zoom out from it all a bit and get some clarity on the situation. Alison's disillusioned. She doesn't know that she has a place in the Red Keep or if she did, whether she wants it. And I think at the beginning of it, we're sort of wondering, is Alison out here to end it all? This moment of peace that could potentially be the last time for her. We see her go through a bit of an awakening when her eyes open, snap back into reality with a sense of purpose. I mean, what that purpose is remains to be seen. 
Il vuol letir vaquejot raquilos taor. The Dragon Keepers very much reject Rhaenyra's idea, so Rhaenyra is left alone. This was actually Emma's pitch for Rhaenyra to go and like walk amongst the seeds as though a pastor amongst her flock in the, the terms of a religious cult. Suffering will be ended. And without bloodshed. When you realize that Rhaenyra is just basically throwing stuff against the wall and seeing whether it sticks and seeing if somebody can emerge from this, it goes very bad very quickly. In many ways, I think there's a way of looking at that scene as ritual sacrifice. <laughs> The whole sequence where I'm running through the cavern in front of um, Thorne, it took a whole day of rehearsing, running it through with a steady cam. They call Vermithor the Bronze Fury, and I think that's really fitting for Hugh. He's quite angry inside. Come on! It's a mystery. No one really knows how the Targaryens are talking to the dragons. We wanted to not just see the same thing again and again, which is a guy claiming a dragon and getting it to bend the neck. Every fiber of Ulf's body wants out. Close my eyes, pray for a quick death, which doesn't come. I think it's that supplication and the way that he showed deference to Silverwing that probably makes her choose him. But we didn't want to get too much into the whys and hows that we don't really understand why a dragon chooses its rider. I've said I'm a Targaryen. Turns out I'm a Targaryen. I don't think the news of Sea Smoke really reached Aemon, and you can tell that by the way Laris and Ironrod exchanged glances when they hear the dragon flying over the city, because I think they both assume that it's Sea Smoke. Rhaenyra's race new riders in the dragon seats. Aemon retaliates without even thinking, and he goes to meet them. Open the gates! He was supposed to be the special one. The fact that somebody else is out there that did this just breaks his brain. So his immediate response is, of course, he rides and gets on his dragon with the intent of going out and killing Silverwing. And he gets more than he bargained for. The Horde! They got. And for the first time since season one, we see fear in his eye. And literally the Dragon Queen coming out of the Dragon Mont. Not only Silverwing, but Vermithor and also Cyrax. And uh, whatever questions she was faced with, she was right in the end and was able to assemble this army of dragons. Yeah.